and it's just got like a squeezy oh it almost looks like there's teeny 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 i mean yeah i get it i get the hype like an actual simpsons character <laughs> decent <gasps> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be testing some products that TikTok made me try. I think I've done some kind of similar videos to this in the past, but basically, it's in the name. I've seen these products on TikTok, people have raved about them endlessly, so I'm going to try them and let you know if they're any good. If you're not following me on TikTok, you can follow me over there, it's just at Soph Does Life. My Instagram is at Soph and my Twitter is also at Soph Does Life. Let's get into the video. The first thing is kind of random, it's actually a moisturiser. I did mention this in a video, I think it was like last week. This is the Embryo Lease Le Creme Sensitive. The original was called the Le Creme Concentré. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it. I think it translates as milk cream concentrate. I saw this all over TikTok as people were saying that it's a really, really good moisturizer. I bought the original one off of Amazon. However, the original one, I actually found the scent irritated my skin slightly. But this is a truly TikTok made me buy it kind of product. So this is actually the sensitive one, which doesn't have a fragrance. And this one I absolutely love. I will show you the texture of it. It's not the texture that I was expecting. When I watched people apply it on TikTok, I thought it was going to be really, really thick. It is relatively thick, but when you blend it out, it feels a lot thinner. I don't know, for some reason, just seeing videos of this, I thought it was going to be really thick and pasty feeling, but it's really not. Honestly, this is worth the hype. It's one of the nicest moisturizers I've used in a long time. And this sensitive one doesn't irritate my skin at all, thank God. It just sinks in so nicely and it just feels so hydrating without feeling really oily and greasy. It's just really nice. I really like it. This next product that I'm going to use in this next section of the video is actually sponsored by e.l.f., which I am absolutely delighted to be working with them on this product, which is the Power Grip Primer, because I was waiting for this to come to the UK. I saw everyone in the US had this first, and people were talking about how this primer is a dupe for my favourite primer ever, which if you watch my videos, you probably know what that is. So when Elf asked if I would like to work with them on a video for this, I was like, okay, let me try it first. I've been testing this over the past couple of weeks, and I have a strong feeling that this is going to make it into my 2022 favourites video. So this is what it looks like. It comes in a squeezy tube. It does have a pump and so I usually just use one pump of this and this is what the texture looks like. Let me just actually put it on my face before it drips onto the floor. But as you can see it's like a translucent gel. It looks like it's blue in the tube. It doesn't come out blue on your face so obviously it's going to work for every skin tone. It is this tacky feeling gel consistency. Anything that leaves my skin feeling a bit tacky I am all about that. And obviously my skin is kind of dry and oily at the same time. I would say it's sort of like combo skin. After testing this I would say this would probably work for every skin type because it's got that kind of tackiness to it so that it's going to make your foundation sort of stick to it and if you've got oily skin then that's going to be great for like your makeup and foundation lasting throughout the day but it's also got hyaluronic acid in it so it feels hydrating at the same time it is just such a good primer and I will obviously show you how my makeup applies over the top of this and the way that I find best to apply this is literally just with my fingers I rub it in and then I'll just sort of like pat over it to make sure that it's all fully blended and covering like all parts of my skin but yeah it's called power grip for a reason I've tested it with multiple different foundations some of my favorite foundations I'm just so excited by this I'm so happy that it's finally available in the UK. You can get it from Superdrug. I will leave a link down below. I'm just honored that Elf wanted me to work on a video with this because it was all over my TikTok for months and I finally have it in my hands and it is, in my opinion, worth the hype. And it's described as leaving a soft focus finish, which I would say that I agree with. It's definitely not a matte primer, as you can see from my face, but it's not like an oily one either. So all of the people that I saw raving about this on TikTok, they were not wrong. The next thing is actually something that I bought quite a few... When did this even come out? I can't remember when this came out. Basically, I've had it for a while, but I haven't even used it on camera yet. But again, I'd seen people talking about this on TikTok, on Instagram, on Twitter even. It is the Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturiser, and I got the shade 22W. On their website, they had a sort of conversion chart of what shade you would be in this compared to like what other shades you are on their regular foundations. And so I went off of that, and it seemed to be a pretty good match. So it's the Positive Light Tinted Moisturiser. It's got SPF 20, and I really like the packaging of this. It's in a squeezy tube, and then it's got like a chunk out the side of it. I think that's so that it stops it from rolling off of a surface, which is pretty cool. I could be wrong. I think that's the reason. And it's just got like a squeezy... Oh! I didn't actually want to squeeze them out. I didn't think it would come out holding it upright. It's just got a squeezy nozzle. I'm going to show you what this looks like. 
Maybe that's a bit too much. When it comes to tinted moisturizer, I generally prefer to blend them out with a brush. That's just my personal preference. I don't know why. I feel like it just gives a little bit more coverage. So can you sort of see the level of coverage? It definitely does have some. It's not like a, I thought maybe it would be a bit like the Glossier skin tint that's like really, really, really light coverage. But no, this has definitely got some coverage to it. By the way, this brush that I use all the time is actually the Elf Putty brush. Not part of the sponsorship, but it's a really good brush for foundation. I know that it's supposed to be used with their putty primer, but I use it for everything like foundation cream bronzer cream blush i actually put too much on i think on my forehead definitely i really didn't need that much and then i'm just gonna tap over everything with my sponge so i actually think i put a bit much on as you can see it's got really nice coverage it's covered all the redness around my nose it's covered sort of like some of the darkness underneath my eyes but it doesn't completely erase stuff obviously it's a tinted moisturizer it's not going to be full coverage but this is what the shade looks like and i believe i wear the shade 140 w in their foundation oh no it's 190 w i think and just a little side note it works really really nicely with that primer underneath it looks really smooth like around my nose and stuff so with the amount that i put on i'd say it's more of like a foundation consistency it's not as sort of undetectable as some of my other tinted moisturizers however if you wanted it to be more skin like you could maybe use like half of what i just put on my face but i do really like it i think it sits on my skin really nicely it's quite hydrating without being overly oily because some tinted moisturizers are kind of just like straight up oil i don't find that with this one and i find that it lasts a decent amount of time as well it's got a really really good shade range i would would definitely recommend it. I like the packaging as well because it's not too heavy, you know, like if you're taking it on holiday or something, or even just in like storage purposes, it's quite a small little package. <laughs> bottle. <laughs> Let me just do my concealer and my cream bronzer and then I will talk about the next product that TikTok made me try. The next thing that TikTok made me buy is the NARS Torrid Liquid Blush. I actually got this at Vista Village a couple weeks ago. It was reduced from £27 to £19.50 so I thought, you know what, that is too good of a bargain. I mean, it's still expensive. <laughs> this has been around for years, I'm pretty sure. Unless I am mistaken, I swear I remember people talking about this ages and ages ago. It's basically just a liquid blush and for some reason people just went crazy over this on TikTok. So this is what it looks like. How do I apply this? Do I go in with... I guess I put some on the back... Oh no wait, hang on. Let me just try... I'm just gonna try putting a little bit on my finger and then just like dotting it onto my cheeks and then I'll blend it out. I don't know, is that gonna be enough? It looks really pigmented actually. I have a feeling I'm just gonna need a tiny amount. Let's see... Oh my goodness. That is such a beautiful color. Also, it's really, really pigmented. Did you see I put the smallest little amount on? Well, it was kind of like half a pump that came out, but because of the pigment, I feel like this would actually show up on quite a lot of skin tones because this is too much. I've done too much here. I will go in and blend it out. Oh my goodness, this color blended so easily in with the rest of my foundation. I've also seen people use this underneath their makeup and then do like tinted moisturizer over the top, but I would rather just put it on like this, to be honest. That is really stunning. What's the finish of this like? Let me just, whoa, yeah, it's actually really liquidy. I think definitely give it a good shake before you put it on. Actually, when you blend it in, you can't even really see, but it almost looks like there's teeny, 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 teeny. <laughs> any more times I want to say the word teeny. Little bits of shimmer in it, but not chunks of glitter at all. And when you blend it out, actually, I can't even see them, but it's just got a slight glow to it. I love that. I love the colour. I love it. I really love it. And that little thing is going to last me forever because I needed not even a pump, like one drip, and it just spreads so easily. I mean, yeah, I get it. I get the hype, which is not something I'm expecting to say about the next one. This is the Ben Nye Pretty Pink Translucent Powder. I have seen people all over the internet using pink powder. I don't know where this weird craze came from. I think it was when Huda Beauty came out with the cherry, bo cherry blossom collection and there was a cherry blossom powder i think it was called but that one is actually now out of stock i think it was a limited edition one i'd imagine they probably will be bringing it back because it was so popular but i've seen other people talk about this one as well which is the ben nye pretty pink powder i just have a feeling it's going to make my under eyes pink i think maybe my skin tone is a bit too fair for this because the people that i saw raving about pink powder they were a bit more tanned than i was they had sort of like medium to deep skin tones is this going to be like the banana powder all over again because remember when everyone used to rave about banana powder? I remember I got hold of one and it just turned me yellow. Like an actual Simpsons character. So I'm really hoping that this is not going to do the same because my base is looking so nice. I don't want to ruin it. I'm just going to make sure that the creases under my eyes are just blended out. It was about £10 or maybe £12. The packaging of these is so difficult though. I'm just going to go for it. Dipping into the lid. Taking a small amount. Other side. 
It's supposed to give a brightening effect to your under eyes and brighten more than other colours of powder would brighten. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. I saw that one coming from a mile off. I'm sad, my base was looking so good and it's just too dark for me. It is just too dark of a pink shade. It has not brightened my under eyes. It has done the opposite effect and made it look like I have a rash. My under eyes do look very smooth. It's a nice texture of powder, but this color is definitely not for me. I can see how maybe it would work on people that do have, like I said, more medium to deep skin tones, but I've seen loads of people raving about pink powder. Maybe it's just this particular one. The color of it is too dark, but I did see people talk about how this is supposed a dupe for the Huda Beauty one, so maybe that one would also be too dark for me. If you have fair skin, avoid this. <laughs> now I need to try and fix it with some powder that's actually my colour. Let me just see what I can do here. I tried to save it as much as I could by adding other colours of powder over the top. It doesn't look as bad now, but that one was definitely not for me. So I've just done my brows and I've done my lips, and the final thing that TikTok made me buy is this, and it's by the brand Danessa Myricks Beauty. I believe it's an indie brand, but they now stock this on Beauty Bay, so that's actually I got this from is one of their infinite chrome flakes multi chrome gel for eyes and face I went for the shade fireball because they had I think five different shades to choose from maybe this one just seemed the most appealing to me it was 20 quid so they are quite expensive for a little pot of eyeshadow however I saw Michaela use these on TikTok and I was just absolutely mesmerized they are these multi-chrome, which means that it's got sort of more than two colors. So this one I would say is sort of like orangey, goldy pink with a bit of green in there as well. It's like a jelly sort of texture. Wait, let me swatch it on my hand first. So I'm just taking a little bit on my finger. Actually, no, let's, let's do a, let's do a decent, <gasps> You know what? The colors aren't even picking up properly on camera. It just looks reflective. Why is it not picking up on camera? I had this problem with the Kaleidos highlighters the other day. I feel like all of the shades of it don't actually pick up on camera. I'm gonna have to insert a little video of it on my phone. Is it gonna pick up on my phone? Yeah, I think it picks up on my phone. I'm just gonna take this much and just tapping it onto my eye. Okay, wait, on my eye, it looks orange. On my hand, it looks kind of green. Can you see the different colors on my eyes? I'm not even sure if that's picking up. Oh yeah, the more the sun goes in, the more you can see it. <laughs> I think I am actually gonna take a brush and just apply this all over my lid. Oh my gosh, but I don't need that much. It's quite hard to pick it up on a brush because of the texture. But yeah, they're just like flakes that break really easily and spread easily because they're in a gel formula. I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> Look at that! One thing I will say is that because they are flakes, it does come across a little bit sort of like chunky in places and a little bit sort of patchy in some places, but I think it looks so cool. But the key to this kind of thing, you don't want to put too thick of a layer on because then it will start creasing and like looking strange on your eyelid. On the other side, I'm just going to try and sort of pat some over in like a light layer all over my lid to see what kind of effect you get with that. You know what? I think that this kind of thing would benefit the most from having a darker base underneath it, but those are two sort of different techniques. So on my right eye, I obviously have just like packed on a lot of it and then on this eye I just patted on a little bit with my finger to give more of like a sheer Sparkly iridescent sort of look. I think this would look so cool over the top of a black eyeliner So I've just put some black down on my hand. Okay Yeah, putting it over the top of a darker shade makes the colors come out so much more It does fully dry down as well. Okay, let's paint it over this eye as well I've actually used a very similar kind of thing to this from Glisten Cosmetics, which I used in my Stranger Things TikTok the other week, but obviously those ones weren't the ones that were kind of TikTok famous, so I thought I would try this particular brand. But I definitely recommend the Glisten ones as well. So I'm just bringing this sort of all over my eyelid because I wanted it to be more of like a... I don't know, I guess just not as concentrated. Oh wow, this is giving me 90s makeup. <laughs> They're a little bit tricky to work with. I think my favorite way to apply it is just with my finger and just dabbing on a little bit because as soon as you build it up a lot, it does get quite chunky looking. Can you see how on this eye, it looks a little bit 
sort of chunky looking. And you know what? The colors are not even coming across on camera. Yeah, on this eye I've put too much and it's sort of gathering in certain places. Don't get me wrong, they are really cool. But I would say less is more. Because the flakes were quite hard to draw over with eyeliner. I've had one of those situations where I've just kept making it thicker and thicker and thicker because it was wobbly. And now the eyeliner takes up half of my eyelid. <laughs> I'm just gonna finish off with some mascara and then I will be right back. Okay, so I do think that those multi-chrome flakes would be really fun for like a festival or something, or even if you just want a more sort of dramatic glittery eye look. But what I will say is that definitely be careful how you apply them because if you apply too much, like you can see on this eye, I've put a bit too much up here and it almost looks a bit scaly and it looks like it could sort of like crumble off, which I don't think it would, but I think just try to not layer it too much. I think for the coolest effect, apply it maybe over the top of a black base and just do a very light layer. I do like it and I would definitely be using that again, just maybe in a different way. But I will say, it doesn't really budge. That's pretty impressive. So that concludes my TikTok made me buy it video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was interesting. There are some really good new products here. A couple of them were like not my favorites. I will be avoiding that pink powder. Maybe I will try one in a lighter shade. The primer, the tinted moisturizer, the blush, all stunning. I will leave links to all of the products down below, including the e.l.f. primer if you guys want to get your hands on this. Thank you so much e.l.f. for sponsoring that part of the video. You will be seeing this in many future videos. And yeah, that is it from me. I hope you guys are well and I will see you soon. Bye.